my name is Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to another episode of my Sunday Sewing Catch Up. We're on episode 55 and as usual, I've got lots of different things to share with you, including some things that I've been sewing, I've got some fabric, um, I've got a pattern to share with you and some plans. Um, before I dive into all of these things, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. You, If you followed me for a while, you will have seen me wearing this before because um, it's one of my favourite dresses, it's super comfortable. It's the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress. Um, which is like a faux wrap jersey dress and then you can make a little belt but I always do little um, waist ties which is what I've got on this. Short sleeves, it's got a yoke here which is gathered and then that faux crossover and then the version I've got on today is a maxi length. Um, I wasn't quite sure how, um, well I wasn't quite sure what the temperature was going to be like um, outside today um, and I left fairly early because I went to get my nails done. Um, and I thought I wanted to be really comfortable. I popped on a cardigan with it and actually I felt really nice and cozy and not too cold in it. So that's what I'm wearing. I will put pictures in of me wearing this, but I'll stand up so you can see. This fabric was from Rainbow Fabrics ages ago. Um, it's really lovely and lightweight. I love the green background with the flowers all over it. And then this version has its maxi and it's got that ruffle on the bottom. Um, short sleeves and then I've just got the waist ties fastened at the back into a little bow. So that's what I'm wearing today. Very comfortable. So what have I been busy sewing? I think last weekend I talked about some fabrics I was waiting to arrive. I shared pictures of the fabrics that I'd been buying from First for Fabrics and I was hoping that they would arrive midweek. They did arrive and that is what I've been busy sewing up, mainly jersey makes. Um, I had some trousers that were nearly finished, so I have finished those as well. Um, but I've been mainly thinking about Halloween and getting some t-shirts and jumpers sewn up for Halloween. So um, I won't start with those. I will start with the dressing gown, which I talked about last weekend. So I had some of the green waffle knit fabric that came in a Sew Haley Jane box left. And I was going to sew up a cropped version of the larger dressing gown for Ruby. And I have managed to get that finished. Um, so I, I only had, must have been over a metre, I can't remember how much of the waffle knit fabric I had left, but basically I cut the length of the dressing gown determined by how much of the fabric I had left. And I've managed to use all of that fabric because with the dressing gown you get a belt. Um, I've ended up sewing the belt much narrower than it is on the pattern. So I think I did half the width of the belt. Um, and I just pieced together all the leftover waffle knit pieces of fabric that I had to sew up a belt for Ruby's dressing gown. There's no pockets on the front of the dressing gown because I didn't have enough fabric left, but she doesn't mind that. It's just something for her to chuck on when she's got out of the shower and she's got her pyjamas on and she wants to feel nice and cosy. So if I hold it up, you'll be able to see it's a really straightforward dressing gown. Um, the only fastening is the belt. Uh, which is here and I've just clipped it in place at the moment. Um, I did manage to keep the length on the sleeves. This waffle knit fabric, like I said, was from Sohidi Jane and I'm really pleased to have been able to use all of it. And then the dressing gown has just got this um, sort of collar that goes all the way around. It is a fairly cropped dressing gown when you look at the pattern. Um, I definitely didn't have enough to do the longer version and it stops just above Ruby's knees, I think. Um, I will try and get a photo of her wearing it, but that is the first thing. I had it all cut out. I hadn't started sewing it, but it comes together fairly quickly, uh, the larger dressing gown. Now, just to say, in terms of fabric recommendations for this pattern, they recommend choosing a light or medium weight non-stretch fabric, like a natural linen, terry cloth or honeycomb fabric. This fabric has got some stretch to it. You'll be able to see only a tiny amount of stretch, um, a little bit more stretch there. So it has got stretch to the fabric, but it works really well because it's a fairly stable knit fabric because it's a waffle knit fabric. Um, and I've sewn two dressing gowns, one for myself and one for my husband in a waffle knit fabric as well. Works really well for this pattern and it means it's really snuggly as well. So that is the first thing that I've got sewn up. Uh, the next thing I got sewn up, I thought I was going to sew it up for myself, but when I was laying out the fabric um, 
to try and work out what colour combination I wanted to do. Um, Ruby really loved the colour combination. It's something to do with either something she watches or a game she plays, but the colours of the three fabrics that I chose are linked to something that she really loves. So actually I've ended up sewing it up for her. And it's using this sweatshirting fabric that I shared last weekend that I got from Heisei's sister. I think I shared it last weekend. Uh, I can't remember. I've definitely shared it in one of my videos. Um, maybe I shared it in the fabric haul video. Uh, but the three different fabrics were this purple rib knit fabric, this pink sweatshirting fabric, and then this green sweatshirting fabric. And I've ended up using the Nina Lee Southbank sweater um, because I could just imagine these three fabrics going really nicely together. Um, I was hoping that I would have enough of the purple rib knit to use it on the hem, but I didn't actually have enough. I only had enough to sew it um, for the collar and then also for the cuffs of the jumper. Ruby's worn this. Uh, I finished sewing it up yesterday. She wore it all day yesterday and then she wore it again today. I've had to prise it off her just so I could share it in this video. Um, so in the end, I used the purple for the collar and the cuffs and then I used the green for the sleeves and the hem band. And although I'd originally wanted to use the purple rib knit for the hem band, I actually quite like the fact that I've used it. It's gonna be tricky to show you, but I actually quite like the fact I've used it for the hem because it ties really nicely with the sleeve. And then I've just used the pink for the front and the back of the sweatshirt. Um, Ruby really loved the um, sort of feel of this sweatshirting fabric. I don't know if you can see, but it's slightly fluffy. So it just means it's really cozy and really snuggly as well. So I'm really pleased I've got that sewn up. Um, and I'm really pleased that Ruby um, has enjoyed wearing it as well. So I did originally want to wear it myself, but that's fine. Ruby absolutely loves wearing it. So I'm really pleased that I've made something for her. And then the next three projects that I've sewn up this week are all using the Halloween fabrics that I shared last weekend from First of Fabrics. They're all jumpers or, or polo necks. They're all tried and tested patterns that I've sewn up before. I think I might have shared these patterns last weekend as well. Um, when I shared this really cute uh, sweatshirting fabric that's got ghosts all over it, somebody recommended that it would work perfectly for the Tilly and the Buttons billy jumper and that is exactly what i've um turned it into the not the sweater dress but i've turned it into the balloon sleeve top which is this one here so it's got the really lovely um voluminous sleeves it's got a hem band and cuffs and then a neck band and i'm really pleased that i decided to go with that pattern for this fabric so i think it works perfectly now i only had a meter of this fabric I did manage to squeeze it out, but what I did have to do, and you'll be able to see it on the bottom, is I had to piece together the hem band. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a line going down the front and the same for the back hem band. There's a line going down the front. So I had to piece that together just so that I could make sure that I could eke it out of a meter. This fabric was quite wide um, and I really love the balloon shape for the sleeve. It's sort of gathered into the shoulder and then it's gathered into this lovely cuff as well. And I think it works really perfectly um, for this ghost fabric. I just think it's such a cute fabric. What I hadn't realised, if I come a bit closer, what I hadn't realised was, let me see if I can show you, some of the ghosts are asleep um, and then you've got the zzz for sort of snoring or being asleep. You've got some ghosts that have got rosy red cheeks. You've got some ghosts that are feeling perhaps a little bit wobbly. Um, and then I think this ghost is holding hands with itself as well. I just think the fabric is super cute. It's a sweatshirting fabric. So it has got this sort of textured feel on the inside where it's a little bit fluffy as well. And I just think it's gonna be a really fun jumper to wear to school. I think the children are gonna really enjoy seeing me in my ghost jumper. And I really love this pattern. I've sewn it up a few times. I sewed it up, maybe it was last autumn and last winter. It's a really great pattern that comes together really nicely. Um, and I have sewn up this version, which I think is a really cute version. And the, the balloon sleeve just adds a really nice detail. So you can see on the model here, that they're wearing the balloon sleeve and it just adds another really nice um, sort of feature to the jumper. So that was the first Halloween themed make. Um, and then the next one was using the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. And I think I'd said that I was going to use that pattern 
for one of these fabrics. Um, and this fabric has got mummies all over it and bats and spider's webs and candles um, and pumpkins. It's a really, really cute fabric. Um, and it's got stars all over it as well. So I use the Nina Lee Southbank sweater pattern. So it's got that lovely collar detail. It's gonna be tricky to see in this fabric. Um, it's got cuffs. And then I always sew up the cropped version, but then I add on the hem band on the bottom and that just has the perfect length for me. It stops just where I want it to on my body. And this fabric is just super cute and really fun. And I'm really looking forward to wearing that jumper to school as well. I think the children are gonna really enjoy um, seeing all the different things that are on that fabric. And then the final Halloween make is um, using a Tilly and the Buttons pattern that I've used loads and loads before. Um, it's from the uh, Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. And the pattern that I've used is the Freya, um, it's the Freya sweater dress and jumper pattern. And I've gone for this version here. So it's a mock turtleneck, really fitted top. And I've gone for the long sleeved version. Now um, in the book, they recommend 1.4 meters to sew up the long sleeve version, but I have been able to squeeze it out of a meter, um, just being really clever with the layout of the pattern pieces and the way that I fold the fabric. So I'm planning to do a video because a couple of people commented when I shared a picture of me wearing the Freya sweater, a couple of people commented saying that they didn't realize you could get it out of a meter. So I am planning to film a video where I can show you how I squeeze out a long sleeved Freya top out of a meter of fabric. So that video will be coming in the next couple of weeks. But this is the Freya jumper using one meter of fabric. Um, and I got this fabric from First for Fabrics as well. This is called pumpkin picking and it's got, um, loads of different sort of pumpkins. It's got little witches on the front. It's got some cats as well, sitting on top of pumpkins, broomsticks, um, and yeah, just loads and loads of different pumpkins. Uh, spider's web, so I don't know if you can see that, but there's a spider's web there as well. Um, I just think it's a really fun fabric, and I thought the Freya top was the perfect pattern to use with this fabric. I just think this is going to keep me nice and warm when the weather's cool. I can see it tucked into a skirt or high-waisted trousers as well, or even underneath dungarees or pinafore dresses. Um, the fabric's just really fun and really cute. And again, I think the children are going to really love it when I wear this to work. So I'm really looking forward to getting lots of wear out of my Halloween-themed tops and jumpers and then i've also got a halloween themed dress that i sewed up last year i'll put a picture in now i can't remember what pattern i used um but i'm looking forward to digging that out and wearing it to school as well i do really love halloween and i love the autumn as well um we've had pumpkins out in school for the children to hammer golf tees into because it's really good um for their gross motor and fine motor skills as well so i'm really pleased with all of those halloween themed um jumpers and I'm looking forward to getting lots and lots of wear out of them. Um, the next thing that I've got sewn up, I just had to finish a couple of things on these trousers. I had to um, insert the belt loops, I had to put the waistband on, I had to finish the pockets and I had to hem them and add buttons. I'd done the buttonholes but I just needed to add buttons. And the pattern that I've used is one of my favourite trouser patterns and it's the Anna Allen Persephone trousers, which is this pattern. I'm yet to sew up the shorts, but I've sewn a couple of versions of the trousers. I've made a linen pair and I've made a pair in chocolate denim, which I've worn loads. And then I had some brushed cotton fabric that I got from Abercorn Fabrics and I'd used this fabric um, to sew up some dungarees. Um, as part of a So Recreate the Look challenge earlier on in the year, I think it was. And I had some of this fabric left and I thought that they'd make a really lovely autumnal pair of Persephone pants. And that's exactly what I've sewn up. So I will put pictures in of me wearing all of the things I talk about. But here are the trousers. So they're a little bit wide legged, not overly wide legged. Um, you've got the button fly here, which is hidden. And you've got the waistband and you've got the belt loops and then there's um, pockets here uh, on either side of the um, button stand. Um, and then this fabric, I love the fabric. It's a slightly brushed cotton, so it's got a really lovely feel to it, nice and soft. 
It's got a mustard background and then it's got these flowers all over it. I just think it's a really lovely um, fabric. I've got a grey um, frayer top, which is long sleeved, which I think will go perfectly with these trousers. And I do like to wear these with um, a belt. So I've got a belt that could go with it as well. They're quite high waisted. So they do come up to about here, which is um, sort of where I like my trousers to sit. Um, and I'd sewn most of these up. All the fiddly bits were done. It was just a case of putting the uh, belt loops on, putting the waistband on, hemming them, and adding the uh, buttons. So it didn't take me too long, a couple of hours to finish those bits. Um, and I'm really pleased that I've got these for the autumn weather. So when it starts to get a little bit chilly, I'll be able to wear these to work. And I think they'll be really comfortable as well. And then I talked about last week sewing up a Friday Pattern Company sagebrush top using this gorgeous cotton fabric that I think I got from Fabric Revival um, that's got these um, leopards all over it. It's a really gorgeous colour. It's like this really rich green. Um, and I have constructed it as much as I've got that lovely ruffle at the front and the yoke. Um, I've got the back yoke on, the sleeves are in. Um, but I need to insert elastic and then I need to finish the neckline with some bias binding so that you end up with that lovely tie detail at the back and then you get that gorgeous little opening. So I've still got quite a bit to do. Oh, and I also need to hem it because I haven't hemmed it yet. So I've got quite a bit to do um, to finish that top, but hopefully I'll be able to get that finished um, in the next sort of week or so. I had a bit of a disaster with this top when I was sewing it up. I sewed up the front, um, you know, and top stitched this ruffle in place and then realised that I'd accidentally attached the front yoke to the back pattern piece. So I had to unpick all the top stitching, unpick this seam here as well. Um, it took me absolutely ages because I'd finished it on my overlock as well. Um, so I unpicked it and then I've attached the front bodice. So I think if I hadn't have made that massive error, then I probably would have got this top finished. Um, but it was definitely worth unpicking and making sure that I'd put the front pattern piece on the front instead of the back pattern piece. Um, so hopefully I'll get that finished by next weekend, but I'm really looking forward to wearing that. Again, I can see this going really nicely um, with my dungarees. I think it'll look really nice underneath. I've got a black pair of dungarees and I think this would work really nicely with a black pair of dungarees. And then one of my plans for October half term got loads of sewing plans for October half term which is in a couple of weeks is to make some more Persephone trousers and I've got some fabric that I've been buying which I'll talk about in a minute um but yes I didn't finish that but hopefully I'll get that finished in the next week or so so that's everything that I've been busy sewing up this week quite a few speedy makes because quite a few of them were um jersey fabrics which means that they come together much quicker and the Persephone pants I just needed to finish a couple of things off so I didn't say the whole thing um so quite a few speedy things this week but I was really keen to get those Halloween jumpers sewn up so on to some fabric that I've been buying so I've definitely been thinking about the cozy weather and um, when it starts to get a little bit chilly and what gaps I've got in my wardrobe so the first fabric is a plain forest green fabric that I've been thinking about um, turning into some trousers. So if you followed me for a while, you'll know that I've got quite a lot of bright jumpers, bright colourful blouses, um, really patterned um, sort of makes my wardrobe. But I do know that I do need to sew up some plain garments to go with some of those really bright and colourful blouses and jumpers. So I have been looking for some forest green twill fabric for ages. Um, and I know that Semi Sunshine have got this fabric in loads of different colourways. I absolutely love this colour and I think it's going to go with so many things that I've already sewn in my wardrobe, including this. I can just see this going really nicely with these trousers. So this is a um, forest green Vatana cotton twill, which is a Robert Kaufman fabric. And I got this from Semi Sunshine. I bought two metres of it because I'm definitely going to turn it into the Anna Allen Persephone trousers. They're a high-waisted trouser. I really love the fit on me. Um, I've sewn them up a couple of times and it's a pattern that I really love. This fabric um, is quite a thick fabric, but I think they'll make a really nice, comfortable pair of trousers. And I really love that forest green colourway. <clears throat> um, it's a twill, so it has got that texture that you would expect from a twill. 
Um, and I just think that colour is so lovely and autumnal. So I'm really excited about getting those cut out and sewn up. Realistically, they will probably be an October half term project. I need to get that fabric in the wash to pre-wash it and then I can get that cut out and sewn up. Um, but I think that's really going to add to my wardrobe. The next fabric, um, I didn't necessarily need it, but I couldn't resist it because it just looked so snuggly and cosy and just absolutely gorgeous. I think they had a couple of colourways of this fabric, but it's described as um, faux fur lined jumbo corduroy fabric. And I went for the rose colourway. It's so gorgeous and snuggly it's absolutely amazing I got a meter and a half of this it's a really chunky corduroy fabric and then the inside is lined with this faux fur I just think it's absolutely gorgeous and um, it's perfect as a blanket to be honest I could finish the edges and turn it into a blanket but I'm not going to I'd really love to turn it into a jacket and the pattern that I thought about was the Friday Pattern Company Ilford jacket um, I think this would work really nicely in this jumbo fur, faux fur lined fabric. And I think it'd be really snuggly for the colder weather. I wouldn't be able to wear it if it was raining, but I think it would just add um, a nice layer to um, any outfit. I really love that rose colour. Um, and I just think it'd be a really lovely layering piece for the autumn and probably winter. I could wear it underneath one of my raincoats that I've got. Um, and I just think it would feel like you're snuggled in a lovely cosy or wrapped in a lovely cosy blanket. My only hesitation about using it for this is the collar. I don't know what this fabric, because it's quite a thick fabric. I don't know what this fabric would be like for the collar. So I just need to do a little bit of research about how I would go about using this fabric um, for the collar and how I would finish that. Um, because the collars, um, two, you cut out two collars. Um, but I think I'd quite like the fluffy bit to be the underside of the collar. So I just need to do a little bit of research about how I would go about that. So if anyone's got any top tips on how I would do that, please do let me know. I don't know if that makes sense, but I can just imagine this being a really lovely Ilford jacket. And I just think it'd be really cosy and really warm as well. So the next fabric I wanted to share with you isn't a fabric that I've bought, but I did do a swap with the lovely Melissa, who is so crabby bee over on Instagram. So I shared a while ago that I got some double gauze fabric in a So Hilly Jane box. And I'm not a massive fan of double gauze. I really didn't know what to turn it into. I don't like the feel of double gauze. It's quite a bouncy fabric. And I don't really feel inspired to sew with double gauze either. It's not a fabric that Ruby and Lola like to wear, so I really didn't know what to turn it into. Um, but Melissa really liked the look of the double gauze fabric. So it was double gauze with lots of little gold dots all over it, and it was in a navy colourway. So Melissa got in touch and said, would I like to do a swap? So she sent me some pictures of some fabric that she was happy to swap. And I really loved the look of this gorgeous camel, 80% wool it is. Um, fabric. I just think that colour is gorgeous and it's such a classic colour as well. I'm going to definitely turn this into a coat um, and there's two patterns that I've got in mind. So there's the Sew Over It, um, I want to say it's called the Anna coat but I could be completely wrong. I sewed it up years ago, I think it was from an ebook. but there's a Sew Over It pattern can't remember the name of it, but I'll put a picture in of what it looks like. And I've sewn that up in this gorgeous burnt orange wool fabric. But I think this would work really nicely as that. Or I was thinking the Kokowara Crafts Nutmeg Trench Coat. I think this would work beautifully with that gorgeous collar detail that's on that pattern with the cute little ruffle. I think that would come out really nicely. I've got enough fabric to sew up either pattern. So I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to go for yet, but it was really kind of you, Melissa, to offer to swap that fabric. And I'm really excited about sewing with this camel fabric. I think it's going to create a really classic coat in my wardrobe. And again, I think that would be really perfect for the autumn weather, but also I think it would be perfect for the spring weather when the weather's starting to warm up, but it's still a little bit chilly. And then in the little bag, um, Melissa included a little bag of thread which was really kind. So I've got some thread to go with the fabric and also these gorgeous buttons, which I think are going to be perfect if I do turn it into, I think I'm probably going to go with the nutmeg jacket because I really love lots of details of that jacket. But those buttons are going to come in really handy too. So thank you so much for that. I'm really excited about sewing up 
um, that camel wool fabric and turning it into a lovely coat. So the next thing I've got to share with you is two patterns. And again, somebody very kindly got in touch with me um, to say that they had a pattern that they thought I would absolutely love using. And I'm really excited about sewing with this pattern. And it's the lovely Corinne. So thank you so much, Corinne, for sending me this pattern. Um, but it's a doll's pattern. So this pattern, you get loads of different doll's clothes patterns included. It's a simplicity pattern, 1711. Um, and on the front of the pattern, you can see there's like this gorgeous sort of tutu type um, skirt, this lovely little top and leggings. Then there's also um, this top, which has got straps. Um, there's also this dress, which has got this gorgeous puff sleeve detail. You've got this little set as well with the wide leg trousers. There are so many different things that I can sew up using this pattern. And I'm really excited about digging out some of my scrap fabrics from my scrap box and sewing up some more doll's clothes for school. The children have absolutely loved dressing all of the um, dolls using the various different leggings and jumpers and hats that I've taken in already. And actually I wore some leggings to work that I'd sewn up a mini pair of leggings for one of the dolls um, and we matched um, and one of the little ones in my new class um, found the leggings and came up to me and said you match and she was really excited that I had the same leggings on as what the doll was wearing as well. So thank you Corinne for sending me that pattern. I'm really excited about diving in and sewing up some more dolls clothes. I'm very excited about that. And then the other pattern I wanted to share with you, somebody suggested it when I shared this gorgeous um, fluffy furry fabric that I got from Flisty Fabrics and I was after some suggestions of what to turn it into because I want to turn it into a coat for Lola. And somebody suggested a pattern company I hadn't heard of and they're called Anna Lane Patterns. Um, and the pattern that was recommended is this gorgeous coat pattern called the Lily Pea Coat. So it's a coat that's got a fitted bodice and um, it's got pleats optional bows which I think as soon as I showed Lola the pattern she wants all the bows um, it can also be interlined to make it a little bit warmer it's described as an intermediate pattern um, and it's designed for woven fabric so I think this fabric will be perfect for that pattern it comes in sizes 2t up to 20 and when I looked at the sizes um it was perfect for Lola's age range and also I could use it to sew up a coat for Ruby as well if she wants me to so thank you so much for recommending that pattern company but also that pattern I have bought it and I'm really excited about giving the, that pattern a try with this gorgeous fabric and I'm going to say it again I think that's going to become an um, October half term project which I'm really excited about. So the next thing that's arrived in the post is a magnetic pin cushion by Oh So Quaint. So I got bought Oh So Quaint's uh, pattern weights years and years and years ago, a good couple of years ago when they were selling pattern weights and then they stopped selling them. Um, and then they've recently reopened again and started selling pattern weights. They're really cute little donut pattern weights. Um, they've also got, I think if I remember correctly, like a sewing tin. Um, and then they've also started sewing, not sewing, they've also started selling man magnetic pin cushions. So it comes in this gorgeous little packaging. I went for a mint green magnetic pin cushion and the theme is a donut. How cute is that with sprinkles all over? So it's a magnetic pin cushion. It's fairly substantial in size and I've got a couple of pin cushions and I find it really beneficial to have them just dotted around my sewing space for when I'm taking pins out of things and then the pin cushion catches them so they don't end up going on my floor because where I sew my floor is carpet and quite often if the pins go on the floor they get camouflaged in the carpet. So I do like having pin cushions, magnetic pin cushions dotted around the place to catch all of the pins. So I'm really excited that I've got one of these that's going to go and join the donut um the donut pattern weights in my sewing space um and i'll link oh so quaint down below um just in case you haven't checked out their website yet but they have started selling pattern weights again and also magnetic pin cushions and like i said i think the sewing tins as well which is really exciting all of their things are just absolutely gorgeous so i'm very excited about that and then i always like to finish these videos with some sewing plans so i have got my where i put it sagebrush top which is here so i just want to finish off that so hopefully i'll be able to get that finished this week so i need to put bias binding around the neckline and then finish it at the back 
Uh, I need to finish the sleeves, um, so insert some elastic, and then I need to hem it. So not too much to finish on there, but hopefully I'll get a little bit of time this week to get that finished. And I've got another Halloween themed make on the go. I haven't started it yet, but I have cut it out and it's using this gorgeous fabric that I got from Stitch and Ink Fabrics. I love how retro it is with the subtlety of Halloween. So I've cut out an Anna Allen Anthea blouse. So I'm hoping to get that started in the next week. So those are the main two things that I've got on the go in terms of sewing. Um, I have got a vlog coming out next weekend, all to do with the Sew Up Cycle 22 challenge, which is running at the moment. Um, so my published date, I think, is the 16th of October, so do watch out for that. So I'm going to be busy um, getting on with my upcycling plans. And then I've also got my vlog reveal for the Grab A Cup Acardi that's coming out. That's going to come out on Wednesday, so Becky and I have finished sewing our cardigans we've both filmed our videos and i'm really excited about sharing with you what i finally went for in terms of what fabric um, and what style of cardigan as well so that will be coming out on wednesday um if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to my channel it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button you get notified of when i bring out my next video i always try and bring one out on a sunday and i always try and bring one out on a wednesday unless my week has just become quite busy and sometimes i do have to post it ever so slightly um, thank you as always for coming back and watching my videos time and time again i really appreciate your support i hope whatever you're up to you're having a really lovely time and i'll be back soon with another video take care bye